Report from Santa Fe is made possible in part by grants from the members of the National Education Association of New Mexico, an organization of professionals who believe that investing in public education is an investment in our state's economic future. And by a grant from the Healy Foundation, Taos, New Mexico. Hello, I'm Lorene Mills, and welcome to Report from Santa Fe. Our guest today is Dr. Ralph Metzner. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Well, you are an, an iconic figure in American history. A mm. little about your background, mm. but you were in the 60s mm. at Harvard doing the early LSD experiments with Dr. Mm -hmm. Timothy Leary, Dr. Mm -hmm. Richard Alpert, now known as Ram Dass, mm -hmm. and yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you and others. And others, of course, but you're most... A couple of dozens of others. Very yeah. well known yeah. for this. And since we're yeah. referring to your historical mm. component, you have recently mm. compiled this mm. book, The mm -hmm. Birth of a Psychedelic Culture, mm -hmm. about those very times. Mm -hmm. um, and they were astonishing times. It changed our world a whole lot. Mm. You co-wrote The Psychedelic Experience. You edited The Psychedelic Review. Mm. Um, what are you doing now? Well, um, my th I'm a psychologist, you know, a psychotherapist, yes, yes. and uh, and also I taught. Uh, I'm retired from teaching for thirty more than thirty years at the Institute of Integral S California Institute of Integral Studies, which is a graduate school in San Francisco that deals with sort of uh, expanded conceptions of psychology and spirituality. You know, uh, so it's not really limited to the field of. Uh, psychoactive plants and drugs. Anymore. Yeah. It's more of the, the general field of consciousness. You might say I'm a consciousness researcher in all kinds of uh, ways, including the Eastern ways of meditation and spiritual practices of various kinds of indigenous peoples, and shamanism, uh, broadly kind of the historical traditions of shamanism, alchemy, and yoga, which are kind of worldwide traditions of expanding consciousness for increased knowledge and spiritual connection to the source or the sources of life. And well, you do conduct workshops in consciousness transformation. Yeah. You were practicing psychoanalyst, and you're, of course, you were doctor. Not psychoanalyst. I mean, that's a... a psychology. Yeah, psychologist. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. You're, uh, you have a... You went to Oxford. I mean, you're... you're yes, my undergraduate was at Oxford and graduate and school at Harvard, yeah. It's right, about so, as good as it gets. Right, right. So you, you brought amazing right. credentials. But what they have called you is the Lewis and Clark of the mind. Oh. You have been out there exploring uh -huh. these boundaries for us. Thank you. Yes, I'm, a, uh, I'm an explorer. You know, anybody who studies the field of consciousness and um, the concept of consciousness expansion is the concept that I like very much, even better than psychedelic. You know, the substances that we studied at Harvard and they're now called psychedelic, and, which means mind trust manifesting. Mm -hmm. But, in, you know, it's difficult to understand and remember sometimes that uh, in those days, in the 60s, those were that and the notion of these kinds of drugs that could expand consciousness was completely unknown, was completely unheard of. And psychedelic, you could have LSD, you could have said X, Y, Z, didn't mean anything to anybody. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine now because in the, since since that time, there's been you know a whole movement of prohibition and making it legal, and then the counterculture and you know all that kind of added. Uh, baggage. So, like, for example, my nine-year-old daughter, you know, one time she said, oh, look at those psychedelic colors, meaning paisley colors. Well, yeah. without any understanding, you know, pa flashing paisley colors is not of the essence of the psychedelic experience. Yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with it, really. It, it was yeah. the, the PR person's it's version. A, it's, a, it's a subculture, you know. Has, so I actually now have in my writings and talks, I go back to the original idea, which uh, Albert Hoffman, the inventor of LSD and psilocybin, actually liked also, and that's the idea of consciousness expanding. Because conscious that's two words that are ordinary words, you know, English words, yeah. consciousness and expanding, and they're kind of unusual because most people think consciousness can expand, like, who knew, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. con is the consciousness is the kind of thing, and I like to point out. Well, actually, your consciousness expands every morning when you wake up. Right, and it you're coming out of a dream, and you're always going, "Oh, here's my room, my bed, my wife, my family, my yeah. dog, my job." <laughs> it's a series of consciousness expansions, and every you know every night when you go to sleep, you kind of close in, um, and that's a perfectly normal thing. 
to expand consciousness and to also be able to contract consciousness and focus. Like we're con we're focusing right now. We're contracting consciousness. Yes. We're not tuning into the the birds outside or the you know the yes. beauty of the environment. And um, but if we were meditating, you know, doing practicing consciousness expanding, you want to stay put. You don't want to be moving around. Yeah. You sit in a zendo. And you close your eyes, and you, you know uh, maybe you listen to music, but you close eyes, you don't move around, you don't talk about the, the weather or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. And consciousness expands inwardly. Yes. Now that would be the ideal way of doing it, using meditation techniques. No. But, in, uh, but I so I'm trying to normalize the notion that consciousness expansion and contracting are perfectly normal processes. But if they, uh, the ideal, the ideal is to have them be under your intentional control. Yes. You expand when you want to expand and control, when you want to focus, like Laurie, now we want to focus. Yes, <laughs> yes. Concentrate. And if you're doing, you know, sur uh, brain surgery, you don't want to have a consciousness expanding experience. Uh, yeah. It's devastating. <laughs> so, um, or giving a recital. So there are these ordinary states of consciousness. We all cycle through the sleeping state, the waking sleep, the dreaming state, the sleeping, non-dream sleep and waking dream sleep, and the waking state. That's a state of consciousness. We're in a state of consciousness yeah. now. Yeah. The wake, functional waking state, I call it. Yeah. And then uh, the Indian philosophers talked about a fourth state. It's kind of a meditative alpha state where you're kind of relaxed. You're not particularly thinking. You're just sort of humming along. Your brain is kind of mm -hmm. humming in neutral. And uh, But then there are unusual states that are triggered by un, you know, unusual stimuli kind of situations. Well, we happen to have the best illustration. You, We're celebrating two new books that you have. Mm one of which is called Worlds Within and Worlds Beyond. It's the seventh hmm. book in your wonderful yeah. series right. on the ecology of consciousness. Right. But one of the earlier books was this one. Right, that was the first The one. Expansion yeah. of Consciousness. Right. And the medieval, is that a medieval piece of yeah, art you've chosen? 17th century, that was like, yeah, that was the, you know, the breakthrough from the earth, earth point that in the 17th, 16th, 17th century. That's what Kepler and Galileo, yes. all those scientists were making what we call the scientific revolution, realizing that the earth is not the center of the universe. It's a yes. solar system, and beyond that is other solar systems, stars and galaxies. They didn't know about galaxies till the 20th century. But, you know, and so this, this is a picture of somebody breaking through the kind of earthbound view and saying, my God, look at what's beyond. It's a classic. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. That feeling of breaking through. And, and, and socially, see, as well, because our perspective of the world, our worldview is shaped by the culture and the society. So we only see, you know, uh, sort of the uh, approved view that, you know, we've absorbed through our culture. And, and people know that because you go to another culture and it has a completely different worldview. Yes, yes, And then yes. science proceeds and kind of jumps and starts. You know, that you get evidence, oh, yes, after... Copernicus and Galileo made the big breakthroughs. Of course, then science had to build up and you know develop that whole understanding. But you talk about there are cultural uh, differences, but there yeah. are also eras and and social movements. When you changed the world so much in the '60s, there was an, a movement of social transformation that had it at its heart. Uh -huh. the expansion of consciousness. And it led to, right. you know, people say, oh, what did the 60s ever do for us? Well, no, right. the anti-war movement, right. the civil rights movement, right. women's yes. liberation, right. some right. more, yes. the sexual revolution, yeah. the ecology movement. Right. All arts. of them were movements of consciousness expansion. They didn't all involve drugs, not at all. Some, you know, the, the, some, these consciousness expanding drugs were also part of it for some people, yes. but not at all for most. But it, the expansion of consciousness, like I always used to like to the example of um, um, the woman who wrote Silent Spring, you know. What, Rachel uh, Carson. Rachel Carson. She described a consciousness expanding experience. She didn't take drugs, not, not at all. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But she said, Silent Spring leads you to ask yourself, wait a minute. Why is the spring yeah. silent? Yes. Why yes. aren't the birds singing? And that question leads you to investigate and find out, well, it's because of these chemicals and these pollutants and da 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 and yeah. da da. Yeah. Which was phenomenal, see. Yeah. So because you expand consciousness, you see something that you didn't see before or hear something you didn't hear before or you no longer hear it, there's a change in perception, you ask yourself, why? And that's what science, science is based on. Yes, science says, yes, why are things yes. happening the way they're thinking, happening, you see? So well, that whole idea, I think, is one that has a lot to 
uh, recommend it. And in today's culture, where do you see that impulse for the expansion of consciousness? Well, it's it's all around. You know, there of course there's there's a subculture that's interested in plants and drugs, and and it's connected to shamanic traditions and all of that, uh-huh. and you know, uh, uh, unusual new new medical psychological advances and. You know, but consciousness expansion is something we all do. When you know, when you when people go out for a walk by the seashore yeah. or in the woods, yeah. you know, and they leave their jobs and uh, other you know cares behind for a moment and just savor, then they can hear the birds and the sp- you know, see the beautiful sunsets. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic, but it's an expansion of consciousness. You see yourself in the, in a wider context, yeah. not just as a man or woman who has this job and this family and this that. Yeah. But it's related to a wider world of plants yeah. and animals and sky and stars and, you know, and all those things. So, what is your Green Earth Foundation? Green Earth Foundation is a nonprofit educational foundation that um, promotes uh, and publishes my writings and others, some others, uh, and uh, workshops um, and uh, uh, dedicated to um, kind of a broadly conceived ecological worldview. You know, I think of eco- ecology not only as a science of restoring the environment in a kind of a narrow sense, uh-huh. but an ecological worldview, which is a systems worldview. Uh-huh. A systems worldview focuses on relations the interrelations of everything with everything else, not just you know an object and a force like a Newtonian kind of worldview of, and it's multidimensional. So it's not just the material doesn't give like status preference to the material dimension of consciousness, which is, which of course uh, ecology by its very nature uh, systems. That's what systems yes, mean. Yes. We exist on many levels. So we have the biological level of a biological organism. Then we have the, you know, and of course we can go down in levels or we can go up in levels. Up in levels would mean going, well, we have, um, and we can go s- s- uh, expand horizontally because each person is part of a family and each family is part of a community and each community is part of a society and each society is part of a global yeah. uh, civilization. Yes. Uh, and then maybe even beyond, you know, but then you can also go at the at the physical level. You live in a, you live in a certain town, and you live in a certain country, and then you live on a certain continent, and you live on a certain planet, and the planet is part of a solar system. Those are all systems of interrelated, and we have different sciences at each level. But then we can go the other direction, and we can go well. The you know we have the body, and the body is a system of organs, and each organ is a com- is a complex, highly complex system. And we study physiology, and and then each organ is com- computes of constituted of trillions and trillions of cells and clusters of cell. And then there's another whole level of biochemistry, uh, the cellular level. We can p- sciences that specialize at each level, and then you can go down. Each cell is composed of molecular configurations, and you can study the molecular chemistry and how mm-hmm. chemistry in her and, of, and, uh, and then you can go on further down and uh, well molecules are made of atoms and you know, atoms are made of subatomic particles and yeah. somehow people have this general idea and you know, institutionalized science seems to believe that somehow the subatomic level is the foundational level but the system's point of view wouldn't say that you see hmm. no one level is is uh, is foundational because you can the foundation is like where you're standing. What, what's the point of view that you're looking at? Uh. And you're looking at you know the levels above or beyond. And um, you, you're always com- you're always a human being. So if anything is the foundational, it should be the middle level, you know, of the human being. And from there you can, you know. So what I'm trying to say is co- the quantum level of reality does not have status as being the most fundamental level. Or hierarchies. It's, yeah, in a yeah. hierarchy. It's, it's not a hierarchy. It's a holarchy. And that's ah. a dif- big difference. And I have a whole chapter in that, my last book this making one. that distinction. Worlds See, a hierarchy is like a, and is a, is a human organization. In like in the in the church, and you've got the priests and the bishops, and the, the, or in the military, you have the sergeants and you have the colonels and uh-huh. the, the generals and like that, which is a control command thing, the control command communications. See, that's what they call it. Goes Ooh. one way, control yeah. command communication. That's what they call it. CCC goes one way. The generals give orders, the colonels and the, 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 the orders to the sergeants, the sergeants give orders to the grunts, and the grunts uh, carry it out and. Uh, that's what the, the natural systems are not like that. 
They're not hierarchies. Yeah. They're holarchies. Because the organs, the, the, uh, the cells are contained within, uh, within the organs. The organs don't give orders to the cells. Yeah, the yeah. Ce they contain the cells. Yeah. And the cells contain the molecules. And the body contains the organs. And um, the community contains the bodies, you could say. You know, or the ecosystem contains the body, yeah. human body, and all sorts of animals. See, it can, at every point, uh, a, a system's hierarchy, can, a holarchy, can go off in different direction. And that's a very important distinction. You know, so hierarchies are human social systems of organization, human relations, sure, with yeah. one way flow of <clears throat> command control. You know, it's the yeah. classical military. Yeah. And that's not bad. I mean, if you're running a military campaign, you need to have yeah, somebody yeah, gives the orders and other people follow the orders. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We chaos otherwise. Or, or even you can organize a factory that way. A whole economic system is actually based like that. And, and I, I, I'm not one of the ones that says that that's the only way to organize a You know, the capitalist system is organized like a military hierarchy. Yeah. The, the yeah. chief executive, they call them chief executive officers uh -huh. and chief, chief operating officers. Yes. What is that? That's military, military language. Hierarchy. And they give yeah. orders. Yeah. Well, you know, there's yeah. other forms of yeah. e organizing one's economy, you know. It's co cooperative where everyone, uh, yes. some people call yeah. it communism, yeah. but it doesn't matter what you call it. What, what, what is it actually, you know, where workers, uh, everyone has an equal status. People may get paid differently according to their skills. But they have different styles. People are working collaboratively, yeah. and there are communitarian efforts like that. But then the the actual whole, whole hierarchies in nature, nature doesn't have hierarchies. You know, there's nobody giving orders. <laughs> it's a systems. For, it's a yeah. systems view. Yeah. Everything is interrelated. We're speaking today with Dr. Ralph Metzner, who is inviting us to take a more holistic view uh, and his work is with the ecology of consciousness and uh, so from your early roots in the actual uh, psychedelic era to this beautiful systems approach that you have on, mm. on our mm. reality mm. Uh, there's you have another new book I'd like to shift focus yes. a little bit called mm -hmm. the Jaguar and Toad tell the, us the toad what the you jaguar. found right. out about well that's a very specific um, sort of monograph on a specific consciousness expanding, uh, you might say psychedelic, psychoactive medicine derived from a particular animal source, but also used, synthesized uh -huh. within the field of research in psychedelics, which is mostly underground research. You know, that's an important thing to understand um, because the so-called psychedelic or consciousness expanding drugs are all illegal, basically, for popular dose. They're not available for popular. Scientists can get uh, uh, research permission very arduously uh, to research them in uh, certain limited areas and those are being pursued and we can talk about those uh, but in addition to that and I, I'm interested in that and I but I'm not directly involved in that I'm yeah, a, yeah 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 I'm not a you know working on a government approved research project um, and uh, but there's an underground which is probably ten times it involves ten times as many people or a hundred times as uh -huh. many people and the number of people involved in a uh, in a scientific research project on one of these psychedelic drugs is probably maybe a couple of hundred. The number of people actually taking psychedelic drugs underground or substances is several mil tens of millions. Yes, tens yes. of millions, or hundreds yes. of millions yes. worldwide. Nobody knows. Yeah, of course. Because it's, it's underground. Underground, yeah. underground means yeah. hidden. It's not counterculture too either. See, that's the distinction. Because counterculture suggests that this culture is somehow re revolutionary or rebellion and wants to overthrow the mainstream. It doesn't, want, no. it doesn't at all. It doesn't no. want to steal. It just doesn't want to... It's people who want to not go to jail yes. for their interests, for crimes without victims. Yes, yes, See? yes. Well, Which your research, this is very anthropological and sort yes. of the history of religion, too, yes. because the one experiment you do with the uh, extract from the skin of the Colorado River toad mm -hmm is used uh, as a mind manifesting, consciousness expanding. Um, and you would think, well, what does this have to do with our world? But I've, uh, in our own state, mm -hmm. this year, we've had issues with what, in the racehorse industry, with, which is called frog juicing. Now, this is a South American frog, not a North American toad. But they're using it to stimulate racehorses and mm -hmm. to win races mm -hmm. and 
in effect, to drug the horse. Mm. We also had the issue come up. We had an issue of would there be a horse slaughter plant. Do you know what the species is? Of the, what yes, is the species? I can tell you. It's a waxy Mexican tree frog. And yeah. I can give you the, sure. it's uh -huh. yeah. philo yeah. something. Right. Uh, yeah, I can yeah. tell you It's afterwards. a completely different species. Of, of course it uh, is. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. but when people hear about these things, they think that has nothing to do with my world. Oh, we yeah, had yeah. an issue of yeah. a horse slaughterhouse. Mm. Was it going to open here or oh, not? Yeah, yeah. And oh. they were saying, well, yeah. these horses have been given... Mm. Frog venom, mm. cobra venom, mm. bute, yeah. all these things. Do you yeah. really want to eat that? Send it to Europe and have them mm. eat that? And so it's just not, these really? things are not as far removed yeah. Yeah. from our life as you would think. So I yeah. found your work in the Jaguar yeah. and Toad just fascinating. Right. And, and people who are interested in that. Sure, right. But mostly I would say, you know, the Jaguar is a code name. The Toad refers to an actual Colorado toad. River toad uh, from which this... Uh, juice can be extracted and smoked. Now, but the chemical active principle ingredient involved in has is known and is synthesized. And mostly pe in the underground, people use that. Well, it's, it's because DMT, they, uh, dimethyltryptamine, uh, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Labo laborious to find the toad and to extract it. Oh, yes, yeah. Plus, yeah. it's a protected, uh, you know, it's a protected species, and yeah. you don't want to do it. But whereas you know, it's like other drugs, like LSD or DMT or, you know, uh, um, ecstasy or all those drugs. They're synthesized by underground chemists, and they're part of the underground uh, chemical but substance. But now, they, this was underground for a long time, but yeah. now there is real research on certain things. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind, talk to me about what we're doing for PTSD, what's yeah. working for alcoholism, and yeah. terminal yeah. cancer patients, well, dying patients. I think patients. those are the three three main areas of yeah. application of psychedelic drugs that are now being explored for the first time. One of them is in the PTSD, which, as you undoubtedly know, is like a tremendous underdressed problem. Uh, latest estimates that I've heard are something like four, between 400 and 500,000 veterans from uh, different, just American veterans from boys, different wars, yeah. Iraq, and Afghanistan, you know, Vietnam, uh, suffering from PTSD, which is which is treated but not cured. These guys are often um, uh, taking like dozens of pills. All right, sleeping pills, pills just calming pills. They commit suicide at the rate of 2,000 veterans a month. Oh. 2,000 veterans a month. More are committing suicide than are being killed in the wars. Oh. Now and this is a humongous social political problem, socio-medical problem. And MDMA therapy, which is uh, a drug, MDMA is a drug, and it's, it was discovered as an adjunct to psychotherapy in the 80s. I used it there. It's, it's the most valuable therapeutic substance ever discovered. It's not a hallucinogen, and nothing like LSD, psilocybin, mushrooms, ayahuasca, anything like that. It produces no visual changes, no percept, no hallucinations of visions. It uh, does not produce any bad, bad experiences. Uh -huh. You can't have nightmare, paranoid, hallucination, anything like that. It just produces an, an organic, totally natural feeling, opening of the heart center, an empathic, a natural kind of empathy without fear. So that people can, and that's, it's, its first use was discovered in the treatment, in, the, in facilitating interpersonal communication in couples and uh -huh. people are able to say things to each other in and a loving way other. without the fear of saying something that's hurtful and da 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 da. Uh, truth telling, in a, you know, and that's why an ideal drug for, for therapy. And then it escaped in the 80s, and I used it. I was one of many, a couple of dozen therapists who were using it, researching it in that, in that way, uh, in groups and individual therapy. We found it was very promising. And then, um, you know, it escaped and became a part of an underground and became part of a, the rave culture where people take it to dance. Yeah. They're not uh, doing therapy. That's not the interest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just have the heart opening connection with people, which is non sexual, incidentally, which yeah. is also a big plus. Yes, yes. But but talk to us about the results with these soldiers yes. with PTSD. Well, that's the thing, because with what PTSD, happens? they're able, with in that substance, and I uh, I worked with it, you know, while it was still legal also in those kinds of situations, they're able to look at the traumatic event, because when you have a trauma, it means a contraction of consciousness. Uh -huh. You're just focused on the danger. Yes. And that's a trigger, you know, like a, a traumatized veteran might hear a sudden loud noise, and because he's trained to react instantly, 
he might just turn around and shoot. Yeah. And, it, and he might shoot his wife or family because the, the, the door cl- slammed shut loud. Yes. It's yeah. that kind of yeah. totally unconscious, subconscious, triggering reaction that's at the heart of trauma. And what is the recovery? The recovery rate is t- significant and fantastic, unlike anything else. Yeah. You know, people have one or two dependents, but it's in the context of a therapeutic. Yes, event, yes, Not yes, just taking yes. the drug, doesn't do anything. No, 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 no. Yeah, not the, but see, with that's some guidance. Thing. Yeah, with a lot of guidance. It's built into a therapy process. That's why the people who are taking the drug at the raves, you see, that's not they're the same. Not, yeah. they're, they're not getting any trauma yeah. healing, except yeah. incidentally, maybe. That's not the interest, you see. That's the key, the key thing. You always have to pay attention to the set, the intention, set and, and set. the setting. Yeah. So, we only have a minute and a half. Okay, I so the other quickly, main news, alcoholism I think. and yeah, alcoholism. terminal patients. Well, terminal, terminal cancer, and that's, I think, there where more the traditional psychedelics like psilocybin or mushroom extract from the mushroom uh, consciousness expanding. Where the the uh, where the perceptual world is con- is expanded, it's not necessarily um, uh, the the heart opening is included in it, but but that's not the focus. And then that's where you can have. And so um, when people have that kind of an experience, uh, coming towards the end of life, and there has been some approved research on that, and for people who uh, the uh, government agencies have given permission for researchers to give this drug. Uh, to terminal cancer patients have been given a diagnosis. You're going to die in uh-huh. three months, you know. So it's not a it's not a cure. Nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. Nobody thinks no, it's going to it, cure it, the cancer. It, it, but just to prepare yourself for dying, prepare <clears throat> yourself for dying. And there's a there's a beautiful uh, short video that was made. You can, that's linked to on my website where a woman was, uh, you know, she she'd been given a terminal diagnosis a few months, and she was given a, a psilocybin as part of a research project by. Her, friend Charles Grove, a psychiatrist uh-huh. at UCLA, and uh, she described this experience very vividly, and you can see it in an interview, um, where she felt that there was this kind of, all her fears about what was, you know, about what was going to happen to her body and the pain, yeah. and what was going to happen to her family and her husband who loved her, and all that kind of thing, she said they kind of congealed into a kind of a mass, that's actually the term that she uh-huh. used. And so it was sitting on her chest like a yeah. clenched fist, and then just dissolved. Uh. And she realized, well, that hasn't happened. I'm alive, and I love my husband. We love each other. I am yeah. here. I can enjoy gardening, and focusing on the present moment and what actually happens. She was. She died serene, yeah. at peace. Yeah. She didn't kill yeah. the cancer. No, but but the consciousness. She died in it's peace. A matter of consciousness. And what a contribution that would be to society when you think about it. Yeah. You know, not everybody yeah. in society has PTSD. It's a big issue, but everyone is going to die. And universe fear of dying is about universal because we have no understanding yes. what our yeah. dying actually means or and is. We have come to our small form of dying because we yes. have we've run out of time. We're out of time. Before we could even get yes. to alcoholism. It happens to all of us eventually. Yes, yes. we've run out yes. of time, but we will be serene about <laughs> yes. it. I yeah. am so happy yes. that you, Ralph yeah. Metzner, have come to share what you're working on now. Thank you for yes. everything. Thank Absolutely. you for being here. Absolutely. And I just want to quickly show your new book, Worlds Within and Worlds Beyond, and of course, the basic yeah. expansion of consciousness. That's, that's volume one of the series. And, and that's Alice, Alpha and seven. Omega, beginning yeah. and end. Yeah. We've come to our yes. end. Thank you, Ralph Metzner. Thank you for inviting me. And I'd like to thank you, our audience, for being with us today on Report from Santa Fe. We'll see you next week. Report from Santa Fe is made possible in part by grants from the members of the National Education Association of New Mexico, an organization of professionals who believe that investing in public education is an investment in our state's economic future, and by a grant from the Healy Foundation, Taos, New Mexico.